still talking in security, the Federal Ministry of Education, for fear of embedding bandits and terrorist attacks, has directed the immediate closure of all unity schools domiciled in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, while ordering immediate evacuation of students. The decision was as a result of rising insecurity and threats to lives, properties and well-being of the students during. The Rousing schools had directed students to vacate latest on Wednesday, July 27, 2022. Other schools disseminated messages to parents on Sunday, asking them not to fail to come pick up their children on Monday unfailingly due to rising fear and anxiety emanating from reported threats. The question is, what is the face of our education system amid rising insecurity? That for over the years, we've had lapses already in the education system. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's underfunded. Mm -hmm. There's some sectors in Nigeria. It's, 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 it's a recurring decimal. Mm -hmm. A lot of sectors are underfunded. We still, we recent Ukraine, um, Russia, and war. We know how many students in Nigeria were in Ukraine. That's to show how much they had to m move to get better what they see as better education system look at ghana look at um Benin republic we have some universities that they pay in mm -hmm. foreign currencies mm -hmm. as part of facts in nigeria you have to pay in dollar if you have to school in Benin republic mm -hmm. you have to school in ghana you have to pay in dollar now education sector has has been true a lot lately and now we haven't this happened already the federal capital territory that is the seat of power where all security apparatus should be tightened up having to close United schools for the fear of threat and bandit tree attacks what's the state of our educational system in nigeria mm. work in progress or or quality. I don't know what, what to use again, but then I'll get a thought from it. Yeah. Um, I think um, that the biggest injustice that has ever been done to the Nigerian people by our leaders is not the fact that they didn't build roads or that they stole public funds. It's the absolute decimation of the educational system. Mm. Now, you look at the generation that is ruling Nigeria today. They all went to public schools. Mm -hmm. Because those public schools at the times were absolutely free. fantastic. Yeah. They were free and they were functional, right? And so what we have now is people who benefited from a good education from the government are in government, not giving the people education. And that is the most significant harm that they could have done to us. Because it's one thing to not build us roads, but to not develop the minds of young Nigerians, right? It means it is a problem, uh, shall we say, a cycle. A cycle. Yes, problem. because now the next generation just don't have the tools. They don't, they don't have the, the capacity for innovation, right? And uh, funny enough, one of the largest determinants of a nation's success is the actual, you know, the intellect available, the, the, the human resource. And that's why we have vast amount of oil as a nation, yes. but yet we have a crippling economy. You know, we, 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 there's not enough innovation going on. Uh, and so to see that we're now at a point that not only is the education underfunded, but we're not even able to guarantee the security of children who are trying to go to these schools, who are just insufficient in the first place, it's just terrible. Now, you have to add in the fact that ASU is currently on strike. Yes. It, it's, it's one of the saddest things that any nation could ever have, like to have basically all the way from your t tertiary institution all the way down to you know the primary and every level that children are either not going to school for fear of their lives or going to schools that are unfunded you know underfunded or even can't go to school because it's on strike it's it's like what is the future what is mm. the next generation and if you happen to not belong to a class of nigerians mm. who has the capacity to travel abroad or to attend a private school what is the hope for those children now Okay, we'll definitely delve into, you know, the issue of um, ASU that you've brought up, the industrial action, as well as um, all other forms of educational discourse. But let's still dwell on the security implication of this mm -hmm. in terms of shutting down schools. Even if you have um, a, a Nigerian can afford to send his or her to a private school, if the environment is not secured, like we have now in Abuja, mm -hmm. um, the child still won't be able to go to school. So my question is this, how as this, you know, degenerated to this point, talking about our security, the fact that schools are now sending children off because of security threats. This is not just another state. 
it's not a not eastern state where you'd say okay um the Boko Haram insurgency has been on for over a decade and all this is the federal capital territory where you have as you've said the headquarters of all military and paramilitary you know um parastatals now why is it that even within the fct our schools are still not secure i think in many ways uh, the worrying trend is that nigeria is headed towards a failed state uh, and that's that's a very sad sad thing and I, I still want to believe that there's hope and there's something mm -hmm. to definitely fight for but by the time you get to the point where the government itself at its seat of power cannot even guarantee the well-being of its citizens it's just terrible i mean it's sad enough to think that we're at the point where we're saying okay at least guarantee our security in the capital territory it mm -hmm. should be guarantee our security in every, every corner state. of this country exactly. right so we've gone to the point where we've admitted, okay, let's leave some states to the terrorists, right? Now, at least the center of power guarantee the well-being of our children. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're not there. Apologies for that breaking transmission. Thanks for staying tuned. And we still have Dakbo Adaramewa with us, a public affairs analyst who is discussing the rising insecurity and um, how that has affected schools, especially in Abuja, having to shut down schools and send children home as a result of um, security threats. Yes, so just before that break, you, you are saying um, it's either Nigeria is a failed state or um, it's just a state that is not functioning properly as it should. No, no, actually, I think we have to either consider that Nigeria is headed towards being a failed state or okay. a failing state, or failing we, have state. To, okay. we have to look at it. And, uh, and I have had the, the pleasure of you know, being close enough to people in government, and I mm -hmm. realize that they're all very brilliant. So in many ways, Nigeria maybe might not be a failed state. Maybe Nigeria is functioning perfectly as it should. But the difference is we have a different idea of what Nigeria should function as, as. Mm -hmm. okay. than the people who have the power. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It could be very organized chaos. That might be the case of the, this country because you look at it at, as how convenient some of these things are. You know, like what happened in Kujay prison. Mm -hmm. Rather convenient. You know, the army wasn't there. Terrorists rolling. Nobody well, comes for hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, know, you know, this particular conversation is a bit controversial because um, some persons, you know, Nigerians on social media would always have to to express how they feel. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. persons think it's it's more like a, a, a swap. Well, I use the word swap, or maybe for lack of better words, a swap. A for handover. Yeah, for, for those who were kidnapped, the Abuja cannot train, and the terrorists in the in the Kuje prison. A lot of people think on social media, on Twitter, a lot of people thought it was a swap. That like you, you release my people, I release your people, or you know something like that. Well, I don't know if that is what I, I, I think it was the line too. Well, because uh, how do you explain? So how do you explain two hours in a maximum prison at the seat of power, mm -hmm. federal capital territory, Abuja, Kujé prison? That that's where all the hardened criminals are kept. Two hours, no security officer, nobody. Is what. Well, I, I, I look at it like this. Um, if I lived in a duplex, mm -hmm. right, and somebody broke in downstairs, took their time, made themselves a meal, ate, and then took my TV while I was upstairs, and I could hear them cooking downstairs, and somehow I didn't come downstairs, call for help, or do anything about it, you would be right to think that maybe I'm complacent, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a strange thing, but I, 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 I try and avoid believing any particular yep. theory, theory because we, we just don't know what exactly mm -hmm. happened. Uh -huh. But what we know is that there are many instances where you have to ask yourself that if the government wanted to, wouldn't it have stopped these kind of things from happening? Uh, then, okay. You know, uh, and so it's, it's a very worrying trend. And that's what I mean by Nigeria is that either a failing state or highly functional state just op operating on a different mm. set of parameters than we want to. We want freedom, liberty, peace, and tranquility, and the ability to go about our daily business mm. and you know make a living for ourselves and our children. Um, but there are elements that might want a different kind of system, right? And maybe those elements are the ones actually you know running the show. Mm. Okay. So that, that that's it's a very worrying trend, and every Nigerian really has to sit down and take a cold, hard look at this nation and say, where are we headed? Okay. No. okay. But, but before we delve to, you know, the educational, um, you know, matters or, or now, let, let's do bother on security a bit. If schools in Abuja 
are now shutting down and sending their you know um, pupils or students back home as a result of security threats the question then will be won't it trickle down to other states especially neighboring states like your Nasarawa, your niger and what have you that's one then two if it gets to that point where other states are also adopting similar measures just to you know avert um you know disasters or what have you what happens to the um, you know security um to the educational sector because Right now, we st we're still battling with the tertiary institution that is, has been crippled. But what happens to your secondary and primary schools in terms of, you know, the education sector? Hmm. You see, um, symbolism is very important in warfare, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, this is a beacon for the terrorists to hold up to show the world that, listen, we're winning. Mm -hmm. This is a beacon to show that we went against the government in the seat of power. Now we went, we released our men. Um, now we are going to schools and shutting them down in the seat of power. Now, I would like to hope that any government official, you know, would have some sense of pride, you know, in the sense that, okay, we are in charge. The moment that school mentioned we're going to shut down, you should have deployed military to mm -hmm. absolutely protect that school and make it clear to the parents that there's no need. We no longer need to shut down this school. You know, we are in charge. We're on top of everything. We're guaranteeing your security. But we didn't see that. We haven't seen that. And people are going to go pick up their children. And that's it. So there doesn't seem to be a, a, a desperate sense to show that we're in charge. And the problem with that, like you said, is it then sends a, a message to criminal elements all over that. You know what? We're winning. Mm -hmm. We're attacking the seat of power. And nobody's doing anything about it. Okay. It's, it's even a recruiting uh, strategy. strategy because it, it's like listen we are well on our way to, to taking over the whole country so you might as well join the winning side no no that's what i think from the angle for this angle the level the trust level between the government and the people has been breached no has been there is know, no there is no there's trust. no trust there's no trust actually because if i say it has been breached, that means there's no trust at all so even if the government comes and say for instance you have a child in one of the music schools in the federal capital territory knowing fully well what has happened within that area in recent times and the government is telling you don't worry you see security personnel everywhere the government is telling you don't worry maybe there's a statement by the president saying that but do not worry probably if i were your wife or if i i wouldn't even if you say honey don't worry government i would say excuse me sir i'm so sorry to disrespect you but my child i wouldn't put him or her in that condition because i don't even trust the government for having the 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 nda attacked having the seat of power attacked i can't even trust the government enough to listen to their words and stick it to the bank so the trust level within the government and the people i wouldn't even allow my child to be there and I, I don't know if you would but as a woman well as a mother i wouldn't even allow that to happen because i don't even trust what the government has to say and then look at it from um the area of having an insider because as an adage that says an inside right to always tell is only the inside rights that knows where the food is in the house i can't come into the studio and as I walk here, I know where the restroom is, I know where the equipment are kept. You, you do not know. Someone has to tell you mm. about the system, having an insider that disseminates information. Do not forget that a point in, as some weeks ago, the president advanced team was attacked. How did they know where and where they are moving to? How did they know when to attack Kujie prison? How did they know where to attack, when to come into the NDA and take a military personnel out of a high-ranking military personnel look at all of these things is it something to take the words of the government to the bank really no I don't think it's uh, well you know I don't think anybody would risk anything significant based on the fact that the government has guaranteed your security I think that would be a very uh, reckless thing to do yep. um, uh, but What's really worrying me about all of this, uh, amongst other things, is the fact that um, there doesn't seem to be any willful action, you know, from, from, the, from government. the government. There doesn't seem to be any commitment. And let us, it's not a conspiracy to recognize that there are people who are educated who believe in extremist ideology. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen cases of, uh, you know, military men, you know, being called out to be members of some of these terrorist organizations. Now, the worrying trend should be how far up does this corruption go? And I think that's what everybody has asked themselves, like how far up 
does this problem, does this road go? Because you, you, you can't deny the fact that these yep. things are not happening by accident, you know. I, I mean, I understand the need for every Nigerian to just go, ah, oh, please, this is too much. Let me focus on taking care of myself. Oh, I, my head cannot wrap. But it's going to affect everybody. Everybody. Do you get it? It's, n it's not a matter of, you know, if it's a matter of when. And if it doesn't affect you directly, well, thank God for your life. It would affect somebody who's close enough to you. Yes. We have a security guard where I work. And uh, he just casually told me that his uncle was killed on the way to the farm. And that's his reality. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's people. You don't have to throw a stone too far to find somebody who's, you know, related, related to, to somebody who's a victim of some of these things. And you cannot ignore, you know, there's, um, there's a saying that first they came for the, you know, mm -hmm. first they came for the, this group and then I didn't, I didn't Sorry, speak okay. up, you know. And it's very true, you know, first they're coming for people in the northeast, we're not bothered. We're like, ah, it's okay, that's a northeastern problem. Then it's getting closer. Again, we're like, ah, no, 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 it's just the unity schools, don't worry. What happened when it gets to the private schools? Then you're going to tell yourself that, oh, no, 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 it was just that one school fire away. My own school is better. Come on. Well, then, well, then we sabotage okay. in the system. Sorry, Samson. Then we sabotage in the system. It's something that really nothing has been done about it. I think that's my main point. Having someone inside, having to bring up this information that there's an oath of secrecy, if we cry not loud. So dealing with sabotage, how can we even fish these people out and deal with them just so that at least we are relatively safe in our space? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's not even a question of even fishing. And what happens when they're fished out? We have a member of this government mm -hmm. who we have videos and recordings of this person sympathizing with terrorist organizations, right? And the government simply came out and said, well, he's a changed man. If somebody came up to you and they w you wanted to employ somebody as your security guard and they told you, oh, yeah, this guy, you know, he used to kidnap and kill people. But that was 10 years ago now. He's a reformed man now. You know, he hasn't beheaded anybody in 10 years. Now, please tell me any sane person that will employ that man as his security guard. God forgives. Mm -hmm. And we should too. But there are some things you cannot overlook. And you don't put people like that in sensitive parts of the government particular parts of government that gives them access to everybody's data in this country. 